The Brexit shit has hit the fans. My name's Mike Cashman. If you find what I'm saying interesting, please subscribe to the channel, buy the books and the music, get your music orders in October and November if you want it for Christmas, uh, invite me to speak at your meetings. The shit from Brexit has hit the fans, and it's hit them in 2021. The thing about Brexit, particularly about Brexit, was that you could be a fan of Brexit in 2016 without any shit hitting you. Um, OK, uh, the currency uh, dropped. That may have caused some degree of inflation. You may not have noticed that. If you weren't doing business overseas, then you may not have worried too much about the value of the pound. The environment for EU citizens uh, and actually other foreign nationals deteriorated significantly in many areas. Um, but if you were a British citizen, uh, you may not have noticed that. So you had no shit hitting you as a Brexit fan in 2016. In 2017, when Article 50 was issued, 2018, 2019, uh, up to the point March 2019, where uh, the idea had been from Theresa May's issuing of Article 50 that we would be leaving the EU, um, but we didn't. Um, there was no withdrawal agreement uh, agreed within the Tory party at that point, particularly. Uh, and so, you know, no shit hit the Brexit fans uh, at that point as we go through 2019 uh, and the general election. Uh, so we would have been looking at a transition period probably of up until March 2021. Um, but then Boris Johnson decided that the transition, you know, we've started late, but don't worry because we'll finish early. Uh, so he concluded that transition could be completely organised within 11 months in 2020. Um, we're still operating under the uh, EU rules uh, during the transition period, during 2020. Uh, no shit has hit the fans yet, really. Um, the vaccine programme starts uh, and, you know, a lot of people have claimed this as a benefit of Brexit. It wasn't the fact checkers uh, demonstrated that and, in fact, uh, all of the... Uh, early work on the vaccine programme was done while we were subject to EU rules anyway. But everything that we did on the vaccine programme could have been done as a member of the EU. So no shit is hitting the fans yet. Uh, we get to Christmas Eve 2020. Uh, at this point, uh, Boris Johnson declares the terms of the proposed trade and cooperation agreement, giving business only a week to prepare. Uh, the British government's attitude of we will be ready on 1st of January 2021 rapidly changes with the plea for all sorts of grace periods that weren't talk talked about before. Uh, I wrote a letter in The Guardian, uh, December 2019, where uh, and I was talking about the Northern Ireland Protocol, but I said the government doesn't have a snowball's chance in hell of implementing this successfully in 2020 or 2021. And that has proved more accurate than assurances from the Department of Exiting the European Union, who said they had it all in hand. Uh, but through 2020, no shit has hit the fans, uh, and we get into 2021. Now, the government, as I say, very happy to, or very keen, to kick the can down the road as far as possible, um, not collecting import duties on goods coming from the European Union. So I think £800 million thrown away every quarter uh, by not collecting those duties. Repeated uh, calls for grace periods and disinclination to operate the Northern Ireland Protocol. Uh, so avoiding the consequences of Brexit as much as possible, but actually it now becomes impossible to avoid. Um, Adam Posen of the World Bank several years ago said um, this is unavoidable to say that Brexit will be a negative supply cho shock. Uh, Britain is imposing sanctions on itself. For the first time, you've got a country that is seeking a trade deal that will provide worse terms than it has already. Uh, and that will have all sorts of consequences, some foreseen and some unforeseen. Uh, we've seen the impact on empty shelves in the supermarkets. Uh, we've seen the impact of being outside the cooperation for energy. Uh, we've seen the impact on fuel at the forecourts. Uh, so we've seen the impact on agriculture, on uh, care home staff, on NHS staff, and there will be many more. So it's been interesting, uh, as the shit has now hit the fans, to see the last couple of episodes of 
uh, BBC Question Time um, because the circumstances were slightly different in each one. But what did happen each time was after a particular question, Fiona Bruce, the chair of the programme, uh, said, now this is a predominantly Brexit favouring audience uh, and that has to do with the geography in which uh, the programme was running. So audience members are selected according to the political views, aiming to match the political balance in that area. The most recent one was in Aldershot. So she said, uh, the, this is a predominantly Brexit favouring audience following a whole lot of criticism of Brexit. So she said, is there somebody here who's prepared to stand up for Brexit? And uh, in both of the last two programmes, do uh, um, watch them, do catch up. It's uh, worth seeing the moment. But in both cases, there was nobody in the audience prepared to defend Brexit. Now, I mentioned this in a previous video. Somebody said, well, that doesn't prove anything. I agree. It doesn't prove anything. It's, um, it is just an indication. But that would not have been possible a year ago uh, or actually even a few months ago. Uh, there would have been support for Brexit from the audience. Um, so I do take some notice of that. It, you know, it's clearly it's not a, a nationwide opinion poll, though the nationwide opinion polls also show that the majority of people in the UK now believe that Brexit was a bad idea. See my separate video about the single market and the customs union as to what we could potentially do about that. What is undoubtedly true, though, is that the fans who were insulated from the effects of Brexit are now feeling it. The Brexit shit has hit the fans. If you found this interesting, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.